Now let's take a look at the uh, long and tedious problems of this section. The problems where we're asked to graph a particular rational function. Like in 52, we're asked to graph the function minus x all over x minus 1. So the procedure they tell us to use is located on 206 and 207. It's just kind of a step-by-step -step, you know, what to do first, what to do next. And the first thing we're told to do is to find the intercepts. So if we start with the x-intercepts, typically what we do is we set f of x or y equal to 0 and solve for x. But with these rational functions, there's a shortcut. What you can do is instead, you can just set the numerator equal to 0 and solve that. And that will give you the x-intercepts. So in our case, the numerator is minus x. The top bit is minus x. We set that equal to 0, multiply both sides by minus 1, and we find out that the x-intercept is the point 0, comma, 0. That y is 0 when x is 0. For the y-intercept, it's going to be the same thing. Because when uh, x is 0, y is going to end up being 0 as well. But for the sake of completeness, what you do is you just plug 0 in for x and find out the y value that you get. So in this case, we already know what we're going to get, but I'll go through it anyway to show you how you do it in general. So we get minus 0 is just 0, and 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Well, 0 over minus 1, you know, nothing out of 1 just leaves you with nothing. So again, our intercept is 0 comma 0, as we expected. Next up, we're told to find any and all vertical asymptotes. And as we saw a few videos back, the vertical asymptotes occur when the denominator is equal to zero. So in our case, the denominator, the bottom part, x minus one is zero when x equals one. So these are the intercepts. This is the vertical asymptote. Next up, we're going to try to find the horizontal asymptote. So we're going to be looking at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. Now remember, the numerator was minus x. So the degree of minus x is just 1, because you can always stick a 1 in that exponent for x, and it won't change anything, because anything to the first is just itself. And the degree of the denominator, in this case the degree of x minus 1, is also 1, for the same reason just put a 1 up in the exponent on x and that will give you the degree. So degree on top is 1, degree on bottom is 1, so we have to go to the leading coefficients. Since these two things are equal, we have to look at the leading coefficient of the numerator. In this case, the leading coefficient of minus x and the number multiplying this, I'll take the minus with this number, is just going to be a minus 1. Again, because 1 times anything is just itself, I can take the coefficient to be 1, or rather a minus 1. And that's the leading coefficient for the numerator. As for the denominator, as for the denominator, the leading coefficient of x minus 1 is just 1 for a very similar reason. 
just that you stick if there's no coefficient stick a one in front and take that as your leading coefficient so the horizontal asymptote for this rational function is going to be minus one divided by one the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator and that just simplifies to y equals minus one now there are other things that the book goes into about symmetry and you know seeing where it's above or below the uh, horizontal asymptote and whatnot <clears throat> but in our case you know that's pretty much solved if you have if you can go to uh, a graphing calculator so instead I'm just going to say plot points and graph the function. I'm not going to need to plot points because, well, I'm good. That's why I'm making these videos. I kind of know what I'm doing. So, a horizontal asymptote of minus one. So, I'm going to draw a dashed horizontal line on y equals minus one. Then what else did I have? In the previous one we saw a vertical asymptote, a VA, of one. So I'm going to draw a line through x equals one, or rather a dashed line through x equals one. And that's going to be the vertical asymptote. I also found that the point zero zero is located on the graph, or in other words the origin, because zero zero is right where the axes cross. So that tells me, someone who knows something about these functions already, that this is going to look a bit like this. So, kind of in the top corner of our uh, asymptotes, to the top and to the left, we curve to approach, you know, we come down from the vertical asymptote and bend off to approach the horizontal asymptote. And very similarly here, only on the right hand side, only we come from the bottom and approach the horizontal asymptote from below. And that is our sketch of the graph. Let's see if we can fit at least one more into this video. So 54. We have f of x being defined as x over 1 minus x squared. So if we're going to graph this, we start with looking for the intercepts. So for the x-intercepts, we could start by just setting f of x equal to 0 and solve, but with these rational functions, the shortcut is to set the numerator equal to 0 and solve. So we just have x equals 0. And that's it. Now, so that's the point the x-coordinate is 0 and with an x-intercept the y-coordinate is always 0. So really the only one in question was the x-coordinate. We knew the y-coordinate would be 0 for an x-intercept and something similar happens with a y-intercept. We know the x-coordinate is zero. Oops, I'm being inconsistent here. We know the y-coordinate is zero. What we don't know is the... We know the x-coordinate is zero. What we don't know is 
whether the y coordinate is zero, but we do because you know, if this is an x intercept, it's also a y intercept. And I'll show you. Because you find y intercepts by plugging zero in for x. Because that's what you know is zero. You know x is zero on a y intercept. And in this case, I claim that you're going to end up with zero. Kind of like what we did in the last example. So this is zero over one, which is zero. So yeah, when x is zero, y is zero, so we get the point zero, zero. Rather dull. So then for the vertical asymptotes, we set the denominator equal to zero. The numerator had its chance looking for x-intercepts. Now we give the denominator a chance to be zero and see what that gets us. Now you can factor this or quadratic formula, but since this is a kind of a special quadratic because I only see x squared numbers, I don't see x's by themselves. The only time I see an x is when it's squared. Then what I can do is I can solve for x squared. That's going to leave me with x squared equaling 1. And then I can take square roots of both sides, adding the obligatory plus or minus. And square root of 1 is just 1. So this is plus or minus 1. So I have two vertical asymptotes. I have the vertical asymptote x equals positive 1 and the vertical asymptote x equals minus 1. And for the horizontal asymptotes, we have to look at the degree of the numerator and compare it with the degree of the denominator. So for us, the degree of the numerator, the numerator is just x, and the degree of x is just 1, as we've seen multiple times already. And the degree of the denominator is hopefully a little bit simpler, because the, de the denominator is 1 minus x squared. And here, the highest power on x is 2. So the degree of the denominator is 2, which means the denominator has the larger degree. The denominator is bigger in this sense. So when the denominator has the larger degree, the horizontal asymptote is simply y equals 0. That's just the rule. Now you can do things like symmetry, and I think you'll find this has odd symmetry or symmetry about the origin, so it's going to be symmetric with 180 degree rotation. Um, you can plug in points into an XY table to try to get uh, a better sense of how this function is laid out. Uh, you can also use a graphing calculator, which would probably be the easiest thing to do. So Y equals zero, that's just the X axis. So I'm going to draw over the X axis with these kind of dashed lines to indicate this is where the horizontal asymptote is. It's on the x-axis, on the line y equals zero. And then I have two vertical asymptotes, one at plus one and another one at minus one. So I'm going to draw those in here, again as dashed lines, because they aren't really part of the graph, but they're going to help, they're going to help me draw the shape of this graph. And what else did I see? So horizontal vertical intercepts, so the point 0, 0. All right. So. Then for this thing, what are we going to have? Um, I need to think about this a little bit. We're going to come from below on both sides here. And yeah, as we approach, uh, let's see, as we approach one from the right, this will be 
negative as we approach one from the left. This will be, uh, oh yeah, this one will actually come from above. So this one will look like a bit like this. Whereas on this side, we're going to come from the bottom like that. Again, if you want to know how I'm doing this, take calculus. That'll tell you how it's done. So I've got to pass through the point zero, zero. So my question is, how do I do this? Um, so it's actually going to be opposite because this does have the rotational symmetry. So it's either got to be come from up top here and go down, or it has to come from the bottom and go up. And in this case, one from the left, the positive, yeah, it's going to come from below to above. So like this. Because it'll be really negative when it's just short of minus one. And when it's just short of plus one, it will be the function will be positive. So this will be the graph with this being x equals 1, this is x equals minus 1, and both of these are vertical asymptotes. Long and tedious, yes, but required.